Placements can feel like an absolute nightmare to play. All of the pressure is on you and everybody's excited to start the new season off strong. Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Nathan Ng and we're going to be taking a look at the 5 tips to win your placement games. With the season starting up, players are going to be tryharding yet again to climb the ranked ladder. Whether you're a silver or challenger, it can feel a little bit intimidating to get back into the groove of things. In this video, we'll be breaking down 5 key tips that you can use to not only win your placement games, but to stay sane during them. Let's not waste any more time and dive right into the video. Starting us off strong, we've got having your champions in mind. Solo queue can feel pretty chaotic and while some people thrive in the chaos, it can really mess up your game plan. Every season, it feels like games are just being decided more and more by champion select. With the introduction of role swapping in anonymous lobbies, this adds a whole new layer to creating a proper team composition. First things first, make sure that you already have your top 3 bans in mind. Great ban options are OP champions that can 1v9 games, a hard counter to your champion if you have to blind it, or a champion that you honestly find just annoying. Whatever you may choose, make sure that you have your top 3 ready to go. The reason you want 3 is just in case someone on your team is looking to pick the champion or if someone else is already banning them. Speaking of banning counters, let's talk about your actual champion pool. While it's best for you to one-trick a champion for your climb, sometimes the strategy doesn't really work for everybody. If you are a one-trick, we recommend banning your hardest counter if they're relatively popular, otherwise stick to an OB champion to get rid of. You should have more than enough matchup knowledge to get by. Now, if you're not one-tricking, you should definitely significantly limit your champion pool. Ideally, you'll have a maximum of three champions to play in your role. These three champions should include a blindable character in case that your first pick or the enemy laner has last pick, your main champion that you know the ins and outs of so that you can have a chance to 1v9, and finally, something to round it out by just being a good mix of both. You can opt for a counter to a popular OP champion, a utility-based character that 1v9's games off your allies, or simply a champion that allows for an adaptable playstyle. No matter what three champions you may choose, just make sure that you have them prepped and ready for the climb. This will help you reduce the stress of champ select while also making sure that you're picking a champion for a specific purpose. The more knowledgeable you are on the champion, the easier it becomes. Before we continue on to our next few tips, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. With our new $7.99 monthly subscription, you can take your gameplay to the next level with some brand new course and bootcamp content. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24 7 to help you out. As a member, you'll even get a 10% coaching discount. So, what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive right back into the video. Pulling us back into the video, let's talk about limiting playtime. We know it can be really exciting to go back into the league season and spam a lot of games. You get the sense of accomplishment from winning games and a feeling of existential threat from losing them. I mean, we all love and hate playing ranked games as we attempt to climb the ladder. However, it's really important to monitor your playtime if you're actually trying to climb. Unless you're quite literally reaching above 2,000 games a season, you will not go up in rank simply by spamming games with your brain off. Instead of mindlessly spamming 10 games a day, you should limit yourself to a maximum of 5. Even then, that's pushing it by quite a bit. We personally recommend doing no more than 3 tryhard games a day. That's what I personally do to stay sane. Statistics show that most players ramp up and perform their best on their third game of the day. After the third game, however, their win rate tends to plummet. This is especially true on the fifth game where you can easily see someone's win rate drop as well as their overall performance. So then, if playing 3-5 games a day is the magic number, surely that's all you need, right? Well, not exactly. While limiting your games per day to that magic number is sure to boost your win rate, it's not as optimal as it could be. To further add value to these small numbers of games, you need to play them with purpose. This means for those 3-5 to five games, you need to play completely focused and at your absolute best. It'll be exhausting, but that's why you're limiting your games played. For those few games, make sure that you're using all of your tactics and strategies to win that game. Keep track of your map awareness, use your macro properly, itemize carefully, CS perfectly, etc. Whatever it may be, do it at your very best. Now then, before we move on to our next tip, let's make something clear. When we tell you to limit your games played, we're exclusively talking about your main account with ranked matches. Ideally, you can play a normal game or a practice tool to warm up and then play your 3-5 games. Afterwards, if you still want to play a league, either queue up for norms or play ranked on a different account. You can continue to improve by using this extra playtime to focus on a specific topic of your choice. Even in norms, practicing the ability to hit 10 CS per minute is always useful, even if you're playing something like Stone Atop. Overall, just make sure that you play a few games, but make sure that they're extremely high quality. Moving on to our next tip, we've got taking mental breaks. This goes hand in hand with our previous tip of limited playtime. Playing League, especially ranked League, can be incredibly tilting at times. Whether it's your bot lane going 0-20 or your jungler perma AFK farming, it can be a bit impossible to keep your mental together. Even if you feel like you're perfectly calm and collected, you'll still be impacted and will play slightly or even significantly worse. Since we're looking to limit your games played, we don't have the time to have a 5 game tilt buffer before we play well again. 
Instead of losing all your games on a random tilt, it's far better to just take a break and collect yourself. Take some time to relax in whatever way you deem beneficial. For me, I like just going out and grabbing some boba. For some people, it'll be as simple as taking a quick stroll with a deep breath. Others may enjoy working out to release the excess energy. Some of you may even play a norm or ARAM to completely reset. Regardless of what it is, make sure that you take the time to mentally reset and collect yourself. Maybe y'all may even watch some pro guides. Anyway, we can't waste any of our limited games by playing at 90% due to tilt. That being said, it's really good to take a break every once in a while anyway. Tilt or not, go stretch, get some water, and get excited for your next match. If you're looking to climb and improve, give yourself some credit and respect for it. The true battle of climbing is maintaining your mental fortitude by staying focused and taking care of yourself. You got this. Now before we move on to our final few tips of the video, let's not forget about our favorite pro guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, what is your favorite way to mentally reset? I've had friends that use to splash their face with water or even take a nap. Personally, I like going to the gym or like I said, getting some boba. Regardless of what it may be, make sure that you let us know in the comment section below. Let's continue on to our last few tips and dive right in. Pulling us back into the video, we need to talk about using your dodges wisely. Dodging has always been seen as a controversial tactic when it comes to climbing. Before, people would dodge lobbies before champs were even picked simply because they would look up the entire team and would decide the game was already lost. With the new anonymous champ lobbies, this tactic isn't possible anymore and it seems to have discouraged dodging. That being said, dodging is still an insanely useful tactic whether you can look up your team or not. Remember when we said that most games are determined in champ select? Well, that statement still holds true when it comes to dodging. Sure, you can't tell that your mid laner has a 30% win rate and is first timing Syndra, but you do know that your Syndra is in an unfavorable matchup mid and that you can't carry the game because your lane is too far controlled. This alongside other factors when it comes to understanding team compositions can easily save you a game by dodging. Other reasons to dodge games are because you or an ally are autofilled and versing a really good team composition or something as simple as you have to 1v9 the game but are hard countered. No matter what it may be, make sure to use your dodges. They're powerful tools even if Riot has made them a bit weaker. Now you may be asking, what's the point of dodging if I'm in placements? Well, it's not like I can lose LP. That's a great point. You'll literally not lose LP for losing a game in your placement, but what you will lose is both MMR and time. Going back to our limited games point, why waste your complete focus on a lost game when you can just dodge and put that effort into one that is far more winnable? If we're only playing a few games a day, we shouldn't be setting ourselves up for failure. It's not a waste of our time, but it'll hurt your mental a ton if you try your absolute best to no avail. Also, keep in mind how valuable MMR is when it comes to climbing the ranked ladder. Losing LP is the least of your concerns as you look to reach your dream rank. Your main priority should be improving, but alongside that, to keep your MMR high. Having decently high MMR will ensure that you won't lose much LP when you lose a game while also making sure that you get good gains. Plus, you'll be paired with better plays and have higher win rates. Overall, dodging may not be the OP strategy it used to be, but it still holds potential to help you out during your climb. Last but not least, you've got to remember to take it slow. In the grand scheme of things, placements aren't important. Placement games put you in a rank to start out your climb with, but they won't determine where you will stay or where you'll go. It can be discouraging to lose your placement games and end up at a lower rank that you begin with, but it means absolutely nothing. All placements do is give you a slight head start for your climb. If they place you low, you're not doomed to never rank up. Just like how placing silver doesn't mean that you'll never reach platinum, someone who plays gold has no better chance. Instead of stressing out about your placement, try your best and just focus on the fact that you're putting in the effort towards improving. Whether you place low silver or high gold, you're still going to get better at the game with enough practice. You've already taken the initiative to improve and climb, just make sure to stick to it. We're all human, we all make mistakes, and we hate losing. Give yourself the space and patience to realize that you're on the right track. Be sure to combine the tips that you learned today with your strong fundamentals so that way you can win each and every game. Keep yourself safe, focused, and healthy during your climb so that you can be the absolute best that you can be. Don't worry, Summoner. You got this. Thanks for watching. That sums up our video for today. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys back in the next video, but don't forget, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.